is Dr. Witten and I just wanted to make a short video because I know that some of you have been a little bit confused about how to set up the database for um, for independent samples tests including the independent samples t-test and the independent samples ANOVA so I thought I'd do this uh, quick video just to to show you how it's done um, it is in your uh, your notes so there's a, a pretty good description there with an example and um, there's examples of how to set it up in the SPSS tutorials but I think a video will really tie it all together and make it um, you know easier for you guys to complete the homeworks and understand it so um, I just set up this to, this is completely made up data so I'm just imagining a study where you know, like it's some sort of me memory study where they're uh, looking at the number of words remembered as a function of whether the person had water or coffee for um, for breakfast that morning. Right? So excuse me, just a silly made up study. Um, uh, so we've got here, we've got the water group and, you know, uh, this is participant one. So the, so it's independent sample. So the people in the water group are completely different people from the people in the coffee group. And that's an important thing to remember. So uh, even though we're used to setting up the database this way, where it's side by side, right? So, um, so that we can, you know, do means and stuff down here and compare them side by side like that. In an independent samples uh, test, remember that, you know, all the people in this group are completely different from all the people in this group. And that's important because when you set up the database, the unit of analysis is the participant, right? So I'm gonna go over now to SPSS. And so this is the same data, right? So I just copied this over. And so here we have um, one column for the independent variable, right? And one column for the dependent variable. And again, this is important because if our unit of analysis is the participant, it's got, a, it's got to go down like this, right? So um, each line here represents a new participant. So we have to stack them on top of each other more or less, right? And so to distinguish them, you know, so we can't distinguish them side by side like we normally do. To distinguish them, we just put a one next to everybody that was in one group, in this case, the group who just drank water for, for breakfast. And then, um, you know, a second group, um, all of them have a two. This is the coffee group, so this represents all of the people who had uh, coffee with their breakfast. So, um, yeah, so here you can see the data over here is the same data, so it's exactly the same. You just you know, flip it. <laughs> okay, so, and then you know, um, to analyze it, you would go to compare means, independent samples t-test, right? So the grouping variable, that's always gonna be your independent variable, and then hitting define groups. You know, like, this is arbitrary. If you wanted to make them zero and one, or, you know, 3.67 and 4.22, it doesn't really matter. It's completely, obviously one and two is easy. So that's what everybody does. So um, you're just telling SPSS that group one, you know, look for ones to define group one and twos to define group two, and then hit continue. And then the test variable, that is your dependent variable and then we hit okay, and then you get your results, right? And so uh, interpreting the results is um, in different places, so I'm not gonna go and spend a whole lot of time on it. Just remember you've got your means and standard deviations up here. Remember to use the equal variances assumed for this class, so we've got our uh, T value here, degrees of freedom. And remember this is the P value so, you know, something I do with my live classes that are face-to-face -face classes, I should say, which people um, seem to remember is the p-value is very, p is a very, um, you know, small sounding letter, I guess. So, um, you know, p needs to be very small, so it needs to be smaller than the alpha level. 
right? I'm sure that comes across much better in face-to-face, -face, who knows, right? So this needs to be lower than the alpha level. Clearly there's no alpha level here that that would be, even if you picked a relatively large alpha level, like 0.1, this uh, wouldn't clear it. So, um, so you would not say that the differences between the coffee and the water group are significantly different. So let's do now, let's take the same data and actually do an independent samples ANOVA. Okay, so let's say that the, um, the researchers added a new group, right? So a different group of six people uh, got together and um, did this study with orange juice, right? So they had orange juice with their breakfast and let's see if that has an effect on memory. So I'm just gonna copy this over. So hopefully, SPSS doesn't fight with me today. Oh, we're doing okay. Okay, so we're gonna add threes here to designate this group as a new group. Okay, so it's exactly the same for an independent samples ANOVA. So now we're gonna go compare means, and instead of going to independent samples t-test, we're gonna go down here to one-way ANOVA. We hit that. So now factor is a synonym for independent variable. So we're gonna put our independent variable in our factor column and then dependent over uh, in the dependent list. Uh, with ANOVAs, you need to um, tell them, you know, tell the computer to give you back descriptive statistics. So you hit options and hit descriptive statistics and then post hoc. Uh, I think I had you guys do Bonferroni, but that, you know, you want to compare each individual group to each other. So we'll look at that here in a minute. So now we do okay. So now we see that SPSS was able to um, determine our different groups, right? So, um, and here's our means and standard deviations, right? And this here, is our ANOVA source table. This is very important because for your, if you look carefully at your study guide, you need to just calculate information given this, right? So you don't have to calculate every step in the analysis of variance. And so I'll um, you know, be happy to talk about that later, but here, so we've got this ANOVA source table. We can look over here and so if our alpha level was 0.1, this would be statistically significant, meaning that there are statistically significant differences among these three groups. Uh, if our alpha level was 0.05, which is um, you know, of the typical alpha level, we would not be able to say. So typically we would not say that there are statistically significant differences among these groups. So, Usually you don't look. Oh, well, usually you don't look at um, the comparisons, the post hoc tests, if you have an ANOVA that is not statistically significant. But we're going to pretend we went with alpha level of uh, 0.10, and so um, we can look down here and actually see that none of the groups are significantly different from each other. Right? And so, oh, never mind. Sorry, it's got these. Eh. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's correct. So if one of these were significant and the omnibus ANOVA up here was significant, then you would report there was a significant difference between um, people who drank coffee and people who drank orange juice on the number of words that they remembered, yada, 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 okay. And so uh, this hopefully will get you started again um, it's usually setting up the database itself that confuses students. So you need to set it up so that the independent variable is all in one column and you designate the differences in groups by, you know, putting one and two and three, uh, for you guys on your homework, you're going to actually have a fourth group here. And so independent in one column, dependent in another column. Okay. I hope that this was helpful please just uh, send me an, a course mail 
if you have any questions or uh, would like to meet through video conference or anything like that. So I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. And um, that's it. Dr. Witten signing off.